Still sure, yet, yeah. recording okay. Let's go into. Oh, no, I need to see the um. I need to see the chat, but you know, this is multitasking, isn't it? All right, let's, I've started the game, and that is the 3D object made by Mr. Adam. Secret base. It's gone. Is it going to be as good as mine? Oh, what, what is mine's? So why why is it? Uh, so this okay. This is something I made um, like 25 years ago. Okay, <laughs> I was a uh, um, teenager at the time at school, just finishing school, I think. And what is what is uh, why is it stars end? Well, I can't remember. I thought it, I thought it was just a cool setting. I think that's from um, one of the. Um, one of the uh, Han Solo, one of the early books from the expanded universe. One of those Han Solo books, and uh, I thought it. I thought, oh well, it makes a good setting. Now, is um, is the volume of the game drowning out my, you know? Can I, can, is my voice still okay? Yeah, it's good. All right. So this is uh, a um, fairly typical sort of infiltrate an imperial base and escape kind of level in a way. A lot like some of those original levels, but so you get to walk through this uh, outside area first. There's a river. This this jump is very cruel. I have to admit that. I don't think it was very fair at all to have this so early in the in the in the, in the level because if you fall in, there's no surviving that. You get sucked all the way down. Um, it was quite unfair, and so my apologies. <laughs> um, but it's not. It's not too long before you get to the actual imperial base. <clears throat> so we go across this bridge. I, um, remember trying to make this bridge kind of look, you know, as 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 three D as as possible. And I think I sort of achieved that, kind of. Keep shooting at me behind me. All right, so this is uh, yeah, you died on that jump. Um, <clears throat> this is kind of like like the original level four, the, the secret base. Um, see how they're shooting at me there? That seems pretty stupid, doesn't it? Um, but I'll show you something in a sec. So you can't get in the main door. If you come around here, this is something that I came up with for this level. It's the um, the one way one way window where they can't see you. If you can wake them up by making a noise, but until you go inside, they can't see you, right? So they're not going to shoot at me and look really stupid like these guys up here who were. I don't know why I didn't do it for that one, but for this window here, they can't see me. So they're going to walk around, but they're not going to—they're not going to try and shoot me through a through a barrier. So that's a little trick I came up with. Same with same with, same with this window here. The guys inside can't see me. I can see them. So we get down to. Get down to the back entrance. Which is how we get in. Not meant to be. None of this was designed to be a particularly hard maze to get through or anything. And that's the uh, that's the whirlpool. If you fall in the water, you get sucked down there, and there's no way out. So yeah, pretty cruel, I admit. Um, oh yeah, that's the 
the wall that you can attack. Um, I'll show you in a sec. Oh yes, uh, look, you've noticed, you, you, you might have noticed. Alright, let me have a look at, I need to look at this chat here. The worst thing Dave ever gave us was a jump button. I think you didn't single a joint of Watchtower because you can see through two windows at once for that time. Yep, yeah, that could very well be right. Um, you might notice these stormtroopers are the ones... This, this is what I made um, last year or something like that. It's the um, high resolution one. So, I've, I've put them in. Now when I come in here, pull these guys. I can see out. So it's been made into a proper window. These are the, uh, this is the good old days um, from uh, before we had alpha, right? So you had to make your glass like this with these silly little white lines. It was quite terrible. I don't think it was, uh, I think it was, uh, it wasn't very long before we were able to have proper transparency. We go. Aha! Now I, I I made this R2 unit. This was my um, little masterpiece, the the rolling R2. <laughs> um, he's got something like six or five parts. It's the oh the invisible trooper. Where's he gone? So the, the Invisible Trooper, that was, um, Peter Klassen made that. I think I, I had the idea of an uh, Invisible Enemy, you know, back when we all were kind of um, playing around with this in the early days and doing funny things like um, putting Stormtrooper logics on spirits so you'd have Invisible Enemies, so I thought, oh, well, why not make that into a plot thing? Um, and, you know, so, so have this, th have it, have it like a, a real thing where, so it would appear to shoot, and but when it walks around, it's it's invisible. So that was my idea. Peter Klassen made the made the sprite because I'm not a very graphical person at all. So that's a that's a, another should be another one way window. Back to this R2 unit, um, that was, i tell you what, making this R2 unit, it's because um, it's five or something different objects, all um, with a separate um, script moving it, to make sure they all move at the same time is pretty was pretty hard, and you can get bugs sometimes. I'm playing with the Force engine, and everything works very nicely in this. Now, I, I, I remember playing in the original game, um, there'd be times when the, the parts would break apart and you so you'd have its head ahead of the body and that sort of strange thing would happen sometimes. Um, and, uh, you know, so it, just, it was not perfect by any means. But, um, it took a lot of effort, but I thought, well, I, want, I really wanted to do it. Really, really, really wanted a moving R2 unit, so I managed to managed to pull it off. And, and, look, and the reason you need to have, you, you have to, you know, to have um, like a rotating head and all that sort of thing, you have to have it as separate object. How did you animate invisible enemies? The R2 slow down my 486, yeah. Uh, How did I animate the invisible enemy? I'm not sure I understand that question, sorry. Right, what do I need to do with this? I've got to get a key. Right, I'm, I'm trying to read the chat as I go. <laughs> I've um, put all the 3D objects from our patch into this. So that's why you've got the nice looking blaster bolts, which are not just a red line, but you get this um, orange and red sort of texture and everything. Okay, I've got the mouse bot, which is textured. Got Adam's ship. Oop, what have I done? 
Or the console. Yeah. That's a secret. I can't remember how to open that. I to kind of stand up here. And... This was very hard without mouse look. So, we've got the key. Animate the R2 unit. How did I animate the R2 unit? It's a VUE file, but there's one for each part. There's one for each leg, one for the head, one for the body, and one for the feet, I believe. Yeah, because the feet. But yeah. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six parts, and um, the way it's kept in sync is at each end of its trip, so at here and at the other end, it stops and gets woken up again by a timed elevator. So it can get out of sync on one journey, but then it will end up back here again and then it will all start again in sync if that makes sense. So. So it, yeah, it resyncs at the end of each. Yeah, I can't remember how to make it get out of out of sync. It's it's definitely happened, but it seems to be working nicely. And and maybe it's something where it, it, where the force engine keeps it in sync properly. Um, all right, now where can I? I can go in here. No, that's the front door. So I have to go through here, and that opens the front door. Then you can go up to the sort of the little tower thing which overlooks the main entrance. So this is, you know, this is just like, uh, just like test base really. So you can open the front door to get out if you want to. Down again. I like making levels realistic. So, you know, having a realistic sort of setup. Now, the sort of stormtrooper. I think it's a very good looking stormtrooper. I do say so myself. I'm very proud of that. It's taken from the 3D object of Jedi uh, Jedi Knight 2, and it's been, um, up, you know, photographed, screenshotted. It's um, a still image from. Um, whole lot of different angles and different going through its different actions and it took a bloody long time something like well, it's probably 100 um, 100 different frames and uh, it took forever to build and I'm actually trying to work on something at the moment to make it easier to make a wax which I'll hopefully get done at some point we can automate that. Okay, so this lift, <laughs> this was my, um, this took a bit of effort, so it's a clever little, um, lots of moving parts, door on each level, which slides back and forth, there's a, um, it's, you know, it's meant to give the illusion of 3D with the changing of joins, so there you see, the, have the, make it go up further and then you can see under it okay so there's, every time it goes through um, so this this year every time it goes through a, it, it, it just lots and lots and lots of the joint changes very very complicated in, to make this work but um, I was <laughs> it was um, one of those things that I set my mind to back in those days and took a long time to test and get right. Four, it moves through four levels and it's got an indicator as well so that was, yep, yeah, I set myself this challenge, probably the, probably the most complicated part of this whole level to be honest, in terms of scripting and writing in. So we, this is the roof, okay there's nothing here at the moment. No, actually now that I'm up here, I think the space
Okay, so <clears throat> this is the landing pad on top of this, of the, um, just like level one secret base, the landing pad on top of the facility, which has nothing here. There's nothing here, we'll go back down again. The layout of this map is, is actually very straightforward and simple. It was designed to be you know, not, not a maze that would kind of get you lost. It was just designed to be sort of realistic in a way and a multi-level um, building. So this is the sort of factory level where they make the invisible troopers. Now we've moved into sort of a more robotics or arc hammer type zone with conveyor belts. And, you know, things that crush you and got a repeater gun. So this is sort of like uh, a bit like the arc hammer, you're supposed to get through things that try to crush you and things that push you off and you fall off and you have Go back to the start again, but as hard as I can. Here we've got um, cogs that turn around and hurt you if you try to go in there. So this is meant to be factory where, this, where the things move along the conveyor belt and there's some welders here which are not alive, just for scenery, although they can hurt you. Acid. So, and this here is supposed to be, I don't know how obvious this ever was, but, no, oh, this is a secret, sorry, there's a secret in here, life. this here, through this window, yeah, strange script and all the signage, that's right, it's English. So, oh, what's the purpose of the shaking, I don't know, just for fun. Floor damage repair. Yeah, I think so. It's floor damage. Jump stops. What was the technique for making the cogs? Oh, just just a rotating. I think just just a rotating rotating wall like like normal, just like in Gromus Mines and the textures from Gromus Mines. And just walls, walls that hurt you. And uh, you know, the force engine which I'm using is exactly like the original engine, so you know you can actually stop them. These things that are um, anything that moves horizontally can be stopped, which which really can cause problems in the tram. I'll show you. Anyway, this this through here. I'll, um, that's that's supposed to be the room where people go in and get made invisible. But I don't know how obvious that was. Oh yeah, that's right. Ha ha ha. Cloaking area. Yeah, I put up all these signs that sort of, yeah, I've always wanted to be invisible. So what you see is these stormtrooper guys going in and getting made invisible. That's, that's what that was supposed to be. I don't know if Arabesh was a thing in the 1990s. Does anybody know? Can anyone tell me if Arabesh actually... It was? Okay. We can code you being um, 
So here's my. This is this is another of those. Uh, uh, just to sort of give you a sense of what I when I sort of was thinking of coming up with the concept of this map, this little. Uh, I, I had this list of things I wanted to do. Right, I wanted to make the the lift with its sort of really 3D feeling. I wanted to make a tram. Um, uh, you know, so I had this list of things, and um, and condition red was a lot the same. The three of us came up with this list. What are, what are all these tricks we want to do and make, and then somehow combine it into a some combine it into a level. So so this was another thing I wanted to I wanted to make a horizontal tram. I don't know if there was another level at the time that did it. I don't remember, but I don't think I had played one, so I wanted to make one. Um, and you know I think those of you who have made maps know that. It's not straightforward to make horizontally moving things. It's it's actually quite complicated, especially when there are joins. Um, you get all sorts of problems, and you have to do all sorts of little hacks to make it work. And um, to make the floor and ceiling textures, um, is it pretty hard? For that? Okay. Floor and te ceiling textures um, don't automatically move with moving sector so you've got to make them scroll separately so there's all sorts of um, and I was going to show you so you can actually if I um, walk against here I can slow the trams movement down and make the make the um, floor and ceiling but the floor and ceiling keep scrolling and this is, you know, this is just one of those. Uh, yeah, keep your arms and legs in the tram and don't jump. And I think I put a warning in the batch in the batch file, the original batch file, saying don't jump in the tram because you can actually make all the joints pull apart. And it's terrible. Um, but yeah, so it's. Um, so you you can you can't. In other words, so you can't make a you can't make a um, how to put it you can't make a horizontally moving thing into a crusher. It's not possible. Um, you, the player, will block. You can block its movement by standing in the way and move and, and moving against, um, and that causes problems and all sorts of funny things happen like. Narshida with the remote that gets um, pushed into the um, into the void. So that's just something about it was uh, yeah that Harkov's tram. That was a beautiful tram. Um, and his tram. I forget who made that. Map, but his tram was simpler than mine. He, he basically he used uh, didn't um, he didn't do the sort of multiple sector thing. It was just one sector surrounded by a texture. So um, yep, it, it, it goes around in a circle. That's right. So yes. It's a wonderful thing to have. It's one of the things that made Dark Forces better than Doom, like jumping and crouching and water and that sort of thing. But it had its problems. So what have I what have I done now? I've got a code key. That's that was the that's the whole point of going through that factory level was to get a code key. So <laughs> so you go down to the bottom level now, which is the basement. Um, <clears throat> This is, um, you know, the real problem with Dark Forces was that you only ever get ammo for the blaster, and so you end up just having to use the blaster all the time um, in levels where there are. This, uh, uh, yes, this is a secret. So if you make the lift go up, up here. Um, what was I saying? You, uh, 
in, in any Imperial level, which is most of them, you pretty much have to use the blaster for most of it because you don't really get ammo for anything else. That's the only thing that gets dropped by the enemies you kill. So. So this is the secret where you get to go underneath. Get to go underneath the lift. Alright, so we have to enter the code. I can't remember if this was one of the original codes or have I made my own. So, this is Ark uh, Hammer, and this is time for this is the uh, where you fight the big boss, just like in the Ark. Meant to look the same, because it's meant to be the brother of Mr. Mop. And the reason for that is because I wanted the, to do the conversation. <laughs> This is deliberately supposed to look exactly like the Ark Hammer. Very close to it. Because we're going to fight the brother of the same villain. And the reason for that is that whole mocked brother thing is because of the conversation. There are a lot of generators here. They're just constantly appearing without a plausible explanation. <laughs> I guess they're invisible, so they could have just been hiding and deciding to out themselves. They could just be standing around, um, pretending to not be there, and then just appearing when they, appearing when they decide to. I think I, I can't remember if there's a limit or if they keep appearing forever. Anyway, so this is the boss. And here is the conversation. It is unfortunate that you do not appreciate what I am building here, Commander. This is all for the soldier's glory and his ultimate war. Something a warrior's soul, like yours, should understand. There is no glory in war, Mark. No glory. Then why do you engage in so this? He can't war? see me. For freedom. You delude yourself, why Commander. Try to, try to we all fight That's, for freedom. Um, some, uh, you make. Uh, the join happens now. And thanks again to. Oh goodness, where is he? Thanks to Peter again. He's an invisible. Uh, invisible mock. So he appears. He, he disappears when he flies. Oh, I'm gonna die here. It's been a long time since I've actually uh, a proper mock with missiles that move. Really not, oh, he's cool. I'm really not used to the moving missiles because for a long time I've been playing it on DOSBox with um, missiles that don't move. <laughs> yep, so he. He goes invisible to fly, and then appears again to attack and to walk. So, uh, I saw that question without boss logic. Yes, you just have to go into each area, I think, um, to, to trigger the trigger the, the main boss doors. I think. That's all it is. So yeah, I didn't want 
equivalent to make him fight dark troopers. Uh, so, we go and set the charges. Down here. Okay, now in, in terms of what you are supposed to do in your mission objectives, so you set the sequence of charge and then you've got to locate the source of the raw materials which are used to make these invisible troopers. So that is where the top level come, comes in. Now, when when you come back to that area where you fight Mok, um, there is supposed to be a sound of a ship landing, and it doesn't work. It's not it's not implemented very well at all. You can hardly hear it, and I really should have. Um, if I was going to fix this up. I would. I'll do what you did, Cardula, in detention center, and I would switch off all those other machinery sounds, which drown drown everything out. And, so when you're on the bottom level, you really shouldn't be able to hear all the machinery. It just makes it's just far too noisy, and you can't hear the sound of the ship landing. So I wouldn't be surprised if people had no idea they had to come back up to this top level again. Um, it's a, you're supposed to get the clue that the, the smuggler ship is landing. Um, so anyway, so now this has appeared. Way that happens is through the same um, uh, remaking of changing of a join, uh, changing of a joins. So yes, we've got the ramp, the ramp, and again, as far as I know, I I mean I came up with this idea. Maybe other people came up with the same idea as well um, at the same time, but I, I you know, uh, so it's. It's actually a staircase with 3D, 3D objects on top of it that make it look like a ramp. So you can tell by the way the texture distorts that. Um, but uh, it was been certainly used in other levels. It's been used in the Dark Tide. There's, there's uh, several sort of sloping surfaces or pretend sloping surfaces that use that same. and we get to fight some aliens. So this smuggler ship is where you did get the final. Ah uh, yes, this uh, this is the force engine with the bug where the um, uh, boss kills himself. It is, um, it's a bug that Mr. Lucius needs to fix. Um, not supposed to take damage from his own weapon, but he does, so he killed himself pretty much. So this is so yes, just this Navicard. Um, when you get the Navicard, you can't come out here anymore. It forces you to launch the ship. It's already been fixed on the Gipper. Oh, oh, didn't, didn't work. Okay. So you get the um, get a never card. Now, why am I hearing Discord sounds? Is it is that um, is someone trying to tell me something on Discord? No. Yeah, Discord notifications. Uh, so now you can't go back out. Something that uh, you know. Th this whole section here relies a lot on the messages. Um, to tell you what's going on, and it's crude, and it's all we had back in back in those days. There was no other way to sort of communicate with the player apart from um, uh, you, know, you, 
could you could you could use audio, but you know, that, that would be a bit more tricky. Um, and then so we rely rely on the, these messages to tell you what's going on, and Kyle's thoughts and all that sort of thing. But um, then you're limited by the fact that you can only see one message on the screen at a time, and so and then, you know, they get over overridden and it's all a bit primitive. Really. If you go to the console, you can see all the messages. Force engine console. The door's been sealed. Now, how do I get back to Jan? So, oh, look at that missing notes on the media channels. That's interesting. There you go. All right. So it forces you to launch the sh <laughs> launch the ship. Oh, it's very subtle, isn't it? Launch. So, this bit was, this was fun to make. Um, you know, obviously, you should be able to see all the scenery of the, um, of the planet, but uh, I wasn't, wasn't able to do that. Out here. Oh, this was fun. Um, there's a lot of sound effects in this next part which come from um, TIE Fighter but they're actually they're, 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 they're in the Dark Forces resource sort of assets files and that but uh, they're actually coming they come from TIE Fighter uh, yes. oh I missed them so they were TIE Defenders which you see flying past they were Paul, Paul, um, Paul in the mesh made that made that tie for, tie defender object, which he used in his very very excellent level. Um, so yeah, they're attacking you, and anyone who's played Tie Fighter will know these sound effects being attacked by proton torpedoes and tractor beam sound. And then the gas which is the whole bridge and there's no more oxygen so you can't breathe. Look at that escape, quite max slow. Luckily there's only me. So, now we get to the escape pod and um, press the switch, we see a countdown. We go look we're actually moving <laughs> if you jump in here you really cause trouble so don't ever jump in here so there is um, vertical movement and horizontal movement happening here okay so we've crashed and we can get out of here That's the uh, the good old um, chopping up of the original um, dialogue files to create different dialogue. Um, so we come over here. Oh, I never showed you the um, first one. So this is a. Uh, Move. You mean the escape pod? Um, because I want, yeah, I wanted to give a real. I wanted it to look like you actually were going somewhere else. So I wanted to to look like, well, you know, I wanted I wanted you to end up far away from the base because of because of this next part. Um, so this is this is another again. This is an idea that I came up with, which I wanted to put in this level, which was the. The wall that you have to attack several times to make it to break through it. So um, it's three or four. It looks terrible. The cracks look awful. I think I've probably made that in um, Windows um, Paint or um, uh, you know Paintbrush or something like that. But um, 
got to hit it several times. Yeah, because of this. So you are now far away from the base and you can see it explode. Um, and I guess, well, you know, you, you could have sort of had it all in the same place. Good job, Kyle. Let's with get out of different here. It joins. But, yeah, good question. If the player has no explosives, I'll just finish what I'm saying here. You know, I wanted it just to look like, if you went onto the auto map, that you actually are far away from the base and that the explosions would be happening over in the direction of the base. So that's why this horizontal movement of the um, escape pod, I guess it, it, it was potentially doable without that, but um, I, wanted to, I wanted you to end up over here, far away. Um, if there's no explosives, yes, that was a flaw, I think. I must have just relied on the fact that you would have explosives at this point. I mean, you kill a Bosk in the spaceship, which gives you this, and this can open, um, you know, and each, the Bosk has 100 ammo, so that gives you, you know, this can blow up the wall. Um, I really should have put some mines inside the um, escape pod or something like that. That would have been better. Um, yeah, I don't know why I didn't think of that, but that's a very good point. And I have actually, when I, when I played through this the other day to sort of check it was all working, um, I did think of that. I thought, well, what if you don't have explosives? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, between the Trandoshans and Grants, that's right. The, you, you do get so it, you're kind of relying on just you having all that ammo still and not wasting it somehow. Um, so that's it. This is the end of the level, and I hope you saw those explosions because that was kind of again something else that I thought was. A, you know, in all the other levels, you get to see the explosion happen in a cutscene. But I wanted the I wanted to make it so that you'd have the explosion. So the, the I guess the thing about this was, I I didn't know how. I still don't know how to make LFD cutscenes. To be honest, I, I haven't made a single one that I could, apart from the text crawl. So um, I was trying to sort of do the experience of the in-game, you know, in-game cinematic. So all that stuff with the ship flying in the escape pod and seeing the seeing the um the thing blow up that's all um uh you know rather than having cutscenes have it all as in game in game events and that's kind of the way things went with gaming anyway that uh, so you look at all the games that were made over the next 10 years and everything's in game there's not so much in the, you know so anyway yep yeah, so I, the, in case you didn't know Pretty obvious the way that those explosions um, happen is just a whole lot of mortar explosions and thermal, deton thermal detonator explosions and all that and it's on a platform and it raises up and then goes down again so they're all still there so if you can jump high enough or cheat to get up here Here, there they all are. There's all the explosions. So they're sitting on a platform that goes up and then goes down again. Inspect uh, player inventory. What do you mean by inventory? Based on changes. How long did it take you to make? This. I, ma I used um, W defuse, uh, and it has, I used yeah, just used W defuse. I, I used that to make all of them. I I never used anything else. Um, I, I did start out on the with the original DOS defuse, but um, we we're, were you know learning. But the things I made were all the Windows version, which we. So I remember sending money off to Eves and <laughs> getting a getting a yeah. Uh, I can't remember what happened. I think you get a code from him and that it lets you unlock unlock the unlock the program. Um, how long did it take me to make it? I honestly can't remember. Um, 
I was at school at the time and I think I just did it in school holidays and after school and that sort of thing. So probably a few months, I, I, you know, um, I could possibly look at the dates that are on all the files in the, you know, they're, they're going to be tight. They're going to still have the same, the metadata on all the files will still have the original um, dates on them and, you know, if I, you could get a sense from that if you look at if you can find one of the earlier made files or assets or something and the date you know the date on the R2 unit or something and then see how um, how how you know the length of time between that and the final gob I guess I could figure it out that way probably a few months possibly six months I don't know I really can't remember I think I, I think I think this came out at the beginning of 97, uh, I, I think. Uh, have a look. Should we all go back to Discord now, by the way?